Everybody can please find their seats. Please find your seats. It is 3.35 on uh, December 5th, 
2022. Mr. Clerk, I'd like to call this Cutter Parish work session to order. Roll call, please. All right, Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Young. Commissioner Burrell. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner uh, Gage Watts. Commissioner, some of these commissioners I know are here, but are not in the chamber right now. Um, Commissioner Tally Farah. Here, sir. Commissioner Atkins. Here. Commissioner Chavez. Here. Are, are we supposed to press present as well? Yes. Actually, after I finish calling your names, um, what if if you could, you'll see today you have a tablet at your station. Uh, this tablet is going to be uh, your new uh, way of um, of. Uh, participating in, in the meetings uh, and it will replace this Crestron screen that you have at your station um, and so it has some more features than your Crestron screen had before one of them is a roll call so if you do want to just click that you're present uh, it will uh, officially document your presence uh, you have a little cheat sheet in front of you uh, we do have Crestron operating during this meeting should you get more comfortable with the other one um, but uh, we'd love to see how fluid uh, this transition is to see where you need help or don't need help uh, with these new systems. So please uh, just give it a try to, uh, to participate. It is very intuitive. It does uh, follow the, the tone and structure of our meetings pretty well. Um, and, uh, and, and please bear with us a little bit because we're learning to operate it on the other side. So, uh, but yes, it is in front of you, and if you could click present, that would be great. Mr. Clerk, could you please finish the roll call? Uh, so the roll call, I called every name. Did you call Lazarus and Epperson? I'm sorry, I have Lazarus as here and Epperson uh, as here as well. Okay, so. Did I not call? I, you, you, you responded to Commissioner Chavez's question, and, and, and I don't recall you. Uh, well, thank you very much. Call. I must have said it in my head and I'm not out loud. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, I'm sorry, Commissioner Lazarus is yeah. here. Commissioner Epperson is here as well. Okay. Um, Let's see, Commissioner Chavez, would you please lead us in the in the prayer? And Commissioner Talaferro, would you lead us in the pledge? All right. I join me in prayer. Everybody, stand, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us today and every day. Thank you for bringing everyone here safe and sound. Uh, thank you for the rain, allow people to get home safely, and let us do the work of the parish. Uh, to best serve the people and the citizens of Cattle Parish. Thank you. In, in your son we pray. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'll face the flag. <laughs> As we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, let us remind ourselves and remember our M MIAs and POWs. And also, citizens may render a hand, uh, citizens may render a hand over heart. All military and veterans may render the traditional hand of brow salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, and for the record, we are uh, showing eight of 12 members present uh, in the chamber. Uh, we are aware that there are two members that are present here in the building, but just not uh, at their, their seats at the moment. Um, and uh, that brings us to agenda additions. I'm not aware of any agenda additions today, unless you have any, Mr. President. No, no, sir, I do not, Mr. Clerk. Okay, that brings us to citizens' comments, uh, where citizens who wish to address the commission on any issue other than zoning are asked to fill out a comment card located in the chamber foyer, and those are able to be returned uh, to the president or myself. Comments are limited to three minutes. I've not received any, unless you have. I have none either. Mr. Okay. Clark. Seeing none uh, submitted thus far, we'll move forward to visitors. Today you have um, uh, one visitor scheduled as the uh, redistricting update uh, from Mr. Cedric Floyd with Data Center LLC. Mr. Floyd, thank you for coming. You're, you're, you now have the floor. Welcome, Mr. Floyd. Welcome, Mr. Rose. We need to plug in our system. 
Okay. I'm just gonna take a second. Thank you. I need to remind Mr. Floyd he's not in New Orleans. <laughs> I know I'm in I'm in Louisiana. <laughs> yes, indeed. In fact, I still almost have my uniform on. I want I wore Sunday because I was visiting my grandkids in San Jose, and I went to the football game against the 49ers. It was on the front row, 40 yard line. Got the pictures to tell. Good evening, Dr. Wilson and parish commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Atkins and other commissioners requested an analysis of the alternative, the alternative plan. You have before you the report. First, the, the alternative plan deviation is less than 10%. And that's, you could tell, on um, the third page or the second page from the cover. So it meets the 10% rule. The next review was compliance with the Voting Rights Act. Let us review retrogression under Section 5 and it applies to Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, even though that um, jurisdictions in Louisiana do not have to send it to, to the Justice Department, but you must adhere to the principles of Section 5 because it's the same for Section 2. I turn you to the federal regs, which is, I think, the fifth page or the page with the right. Please, re right there. She has it up on the screen in terms of, yes. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. I had a question. Could you repeat the last thing that you said about Section I, I, 2 and I, I Section said, 5? I said, and I said Section 2 and Section 5 have the same standards. Section 5 was up until 2013, you have to submit plans to the Justice Department for preclearance. Uh, section 2 uh, uh, rules are within Section 5. That's all I was saying. Okay? So I, 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 I want to move on to the regs. And then, you know, we're going to open up for questions or whatever back and forth. Okay? So the regs right before you about Section 5. Benchmark, and it's re and, and 
I have that is the full uh, page of the procedures right there. But on, in your printout is only two pages. But Jeff will get the whole uh, uh, guidelines, and it reads as noted under Section Five, jurisdiction proposed redistricting plan is compared to the benchmark plan to determine whether the use of the new plan will result in a retrogressive effect. The benchmark, uh, the benchmark against which a new plan is compared is the last legal enforced plan. Uh, in January, I think, I presented to you the benchmark plan, which showed a 42% deviation, and that is why we had to redistrict. But the benchmark plan is your current plan applying the 2020 census in to it. That's just a benchmark, okay? The next page, Rose. Yeah, the next page of the, of the regs. Okay, Go, come on down, move down, Rose. Okay, one or two, have you to read down in the middle, that's not highlight, retrogressive effect. An analysis of whether the jurisdiction has met its burden of establishing that the proposed plan will not result in a discriminatory or retrogressive effect starts with a basic comparison of the benchmark and the proposed plan at issue using updated census data in each. That is, any plan, proposed plan, must use the 2020 census. Just what I already said. Also, the third column, it reads, a proposed plan is retrogressive under Section 5 if its net effect would be to reduce minority voters' effective exercise of the electoral franchise when compared to the benchmark plan. Okay? Next is Section 2, the next page rolls. And I have the, I'll show them the, the cover sheet rolls on, on that in terms of the cover page on that. That's that one page, the cover page of that, that book. No, not that. That's the, the handout in terms of the, 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 the long version of Section 2. <coughs> okay. That was, but anyway, Section 2, it reads, Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act prohibits any other things, any electoral practice or procedure that minimize or cancel out the, the voting strength of members of racial or language minority groups in the voting population. This phenomenon is known as vote dilution. In Louisiana, blacks are the protected class. We wanted to read that, the standard for Section 2 and Section 5. Now go back to the third page. Right here. The next page, Rose. The next page. No. This page. Yes. Okay. Thank you. In District 10, I'm reviewing the alternate plan. In District 10, in the benchmark plan, only 1,081 people had to which, be removed. Mr. Flo, which? Okay, I see that. Now. Yeah, I apologize. Mm -hmm, that's I apologize. Yeah, that's a. What I did is I went through the regs and the law. Okay. Now I'm going back to the stats. That's right there. Yes. I got it. I see. In, in the alternate plan, District 10, compared to the benchmark plan, only 1,081 people had to be removed to be in compliance with one person, one vote, or the 10% rule. There were precincts, there were several precincts, just one had to be removed to make District, two, District 10 to be in compliance. Okay? As you see down the chart, under the chart you have District 10. The 2020 population of District 10 is 21,893. The upper range of 0.5% is 20,812, and you subtract that, that's 1,081. Okay? So if you look at the alternate plan changes under that, you'll see that precincts removed 
4,117 unnecessarily. Precinct added 1,960. For a net of 2,836 blacks out and, and 677 whites. You'll see the demographics of the current 2020 plan, the 2022 plan alternative, alternate plan, and the 2022 plan A1. The different percentages, black. The benchmark plan had 51.71% black. The alternate plan has dropped it down under 43, 42.99. And, uh, and plan A1 has it at 52.58 within a 0.87 that. Okay, Rose, next page. Good. This is to show you what was moved out and what was moved in. It shows you that even though only 1,081 people had to be moved out, you're right in the target. It almost, uh, it was about what, 110 people net gain from the actual pop population of the plan that was adopted in 2011, 2012 but the parish had lost population. But anyway, when it comes down to the alternate plan, plan District 10, precinct 62 was removed, was with 80.63% uh, black, 2,458, 1,982 blacks. District 65 was removed, 1,659, 1,018 blacks, 61.36%. Uh, did not have to be moved. Added to the alternate plan was Precinct 75, and it was purposely done because anybody who does a plan know when you're dealing with black, white, because they're right before you. So Precinct 75, 1,957, white, 1,577, 80.58% white precinct, black, 163. And for a peculiar reason, had nothing to do with one person, one vote. Three people out of Precinct 112 was put into the district. Two whites and one black. Without any justification. Since I've been doing this, the next phase of DeSoto Parish. Since I've been doing redistricting for 42 years, from time to time, I have had to create alternative plans while working. So that happened to me in the 2000 census. I worked for the DeSoto Parish Police Jury, and Gary Jordan worked for the DeSoto Parish School Board, both having the same number of, of members, 11. I created the plan with five black majority districts, and he did not. So I created all and an alternative plan that did not retrogress. So on December 31st, 2002, the Justice Department rejected the plan. And I want, you have that, and I wanted to read the highlight because it's relevant here. It reads, the retrogression was avoidable. Our analysis of the information submitted indicates that the reduction of the black population in District 10 was not required to comply with the redistricting criteria used by the school board. Next paragraph, because you know you're going to have um, this is your copy to keep. A proposed change has discriminatory effect when it leads to a retrogression in the position of racial minorities re with respect to their effective ec exercise of their electoral franchise. Next page, Rose. And this is relevant to us also. Here, the retrogressive effect, as noted above, was easily avoidable, meaning that you didn't have to reduce the number of blacks in District 10. All, all it took, because you had precincts surrounded at one precinct, the school board was not compelled to redraw the district. And when it, when it wished to do so, it was presented with an alternative in which I created that met all of its legitimate criteria maintaining the minority community electoral ability in District 9. 
an alternative that the, that the board rejected. Most revealing is the fact that the board was, had indicated that it sought to devise a redistricting plan result in four districts where, blacks, where black person was a majority of the population, similar to the benchmark plan implemented in 1994. So it seems to be what Commissioner Atkins was proposing others to reflect what happened, the, the demographics of Cattle Parish in 2010 instead of 2020. However, the plan does not take into account the current population of the district according to the 2000 census. So the alternate plan does not factor into the benchmark of, the, of District 10 with the 2020 census. Just wanted to show you that in terms of what has happened. Cattle is not the same in 20, 2020 as it was in 2010. And like I said, I have been an expert on 16 voting cases. All the plaintiffs prevail. Even, ha even having to do with Cattle Parish, because I drew the plans that you have sub-districts in, in your what, second circuit judicial system and the first JDC. With that, to my paper. As it states in section two, which is alive, my last paragraph, the 2020 Cattle Commission alternate plan minimizes the voting strength of blacks in District, two, District 10 based on a 2020 Cattle Parish Commission current benchmark plan that, and it was avoidable. So that is my review of the alternate plan. Unnecessarily, you, re you took blacks out of, of District 10 when since July of 2022, you had plan A1 that did not, did mi minimal change and had just about the same percent black as you found it. And this one reduced it under 43%. So I'll open the uh, floor for any questions or so, but just wanted to give you the relevant um, el uh, federal register and the letter of objection to the De DeSoto Parish uh, School Board as it relates to what we're doing today. Okay, thank you, Mr. Floyd. Commissioner Chavez, you're on the board. Sure, thanks, President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Floyd, for the presentation. Uh, you, you made mention of a protected class in the state of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Who is the protected class? Blacks. And what's the stipulation for that? Well, when you say the stipulation, that's, that was a part of the voters. I don't know any stipulation. Blacks are the protected class uh, when the Voting Rights Act was done in 1965. Got it. And then you said um, they picked on, on language, that a specific class of people via language was? Uh, well, that, I was reading from what the, st the statute, uh, what the, sta there, what the statute, it, it may, the, the language may have no relevance to Louisiana, but other parts of the country. Okay, I, I was trying to extrapolate why that mattered in this. I don't see myself, and I live in District 10, I don't see myself on your, on your plan. I only see blacks and whites, and I know that the Hispanic population is a 4%, uh, and it does not show Asians or Indians or anyone else other than black and white. Is there a reason for this? Be, 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 because that's what, uh, when it comes down to racial polarized voting, has been black and white, and, and it is not a combination. It's blacks and white, correct. Mm -hmm. In Louisiana, you're, you're going to have to say it again. I don't. You're saying I, I have to either choose that I'm black or white when I vote. No, no. You could choose what you want. I'm just telling you as it uh, uh, counts toward Section Two of the Voting Rights Act. You could be what you want. You could answer any of the eleven categories that you have. But when it comes down to redistricting, what we're talking about is black and white, and everybody else is others. Yeah, right. So how can we stay on this chart in District Ten, the district that I represent? that we pulled out a specific amount of blacks or whites when it doesn't take into effect Hispanic. It does, Asian. because because what happened is, if you subtract the total white and black, it's the others, or the other races. So if you do total, and you subtract white, and you subtract black, that's the other races. But you don't have the others on I, the chart. Well, all, all I have to do is I have my wife to subtract it. To to you could do that. You could take the total for 10, subtract black, and subtract white, and the rest of others, the other races. Any other question? 
So you have, I'm looking at District 10 right now on the current benchmark 12 member plan versus the alternate plan. You have District 10 at 19,821. Yeah, I'm not looking at it, but it, it's true what you're saying. All you do is subtract uh, under race white and under race black, and, and that's the other races that's that's because uh, uh, black and white don't equal up to the total. So there's other races there. So, so the the what you're saying is my sorry, guys, it's kind of discerning. You're saying Hispanics don't matter. It does matter. Indian, they they, they do matter. They do matter. They, matter. Guess what? I'm not saying that at all. Hispanic is an origin. It's not Hispanic is not a race. And I thought we went through that or so because you could be a black Hispanic and you'd be a white Hispanic. Well, I, I sure have to put it down when I purchase a firearm no, every single time. No, no problem. I'm just talking about. I'm relating to. I, I, I don't own a gun. And I don't know the qualification about getting a gun, well, but I know about voting rights. And I'm saying is that if you look, take the benchmark plan or the alternate plan or plan A-1, you take the total, you subtract white, and you subtract black, that's the other races, that's the remaining parts. And that's how it goes. Feeling pretty other, President, right about now. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Um, anyone else on the board? I should. Is this thing working? Uh, I'm not sure how to. Oh, there you are, Jackson. I'm sorry, I'm getting used to the new system. Commissioner Jackson? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Chavez is feeling other, but I'm feeling pretty offended. Uh, Commissioner Chavez, if you did not know, uh, the Voting Rights Act was put in place to protect African American votes. There has been no other race on the American soil that has been oppressed, that was enslaved, and whose voting rights were denied. And so the Voting Rights Act was put in place to protect black people. And so we can't come down here and talk about this other. The Voting Rights Act was put in place, there's only one class people in this country that have been discriminated against, intentionally discriminated against. It's black people. So let's not play this game about others. Hispanics have not been discriminated against. Latinos have not been discriminated against. Asian Americans, I think they just put an Asian specific uh, uh, law in place in this most recent Congress. And it baffles me at 30 some years of living that there are some people who don't understand or either don't want to accept that black people were oppressed in this country. There's no other ethnic group or race that has that claim. And it's not a honor, it's not a claim, or it's not a badge of distinction that we wear. It's what happened. And the voting right was a policy in place to resolve historic and institutional discrimination and disenfranchisement. That's why the Voting Rights Act was put in place. And there's a constant attempt over the last 20 plus years to diminish its effect. And we, I, I mean, it, that's why you see black, and that's why you see the voting rights referring to black voters. You never, but I'm gonna move on from that. Uh, Mr. Floyd, mm -hmm. I still hadn't got my meeting in my district, <laughs> and I'm not gonna let up off of that, okay? But on this plan, did I hear you say 
what, what you're talking about, the alternate? The alternate plan. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you go back to, I think, in your last paragraph or ish or your last part of your statement that talked about how many blacks were moved out okay. of this district? And, and let the, me num just, the number of blacks moved out of District 10 was 3,000. And based on your initial plan, or whatever, well, based on the initial census plan, so you, you have, say that again, how many blacks were moved out? 3,000. 3,000 blacks were moved out of this district. Mm -hmm. But based on the census numbers, I thought I heard you say earlier this year, how many blacks were moving into District 10? Well, well you know, over... Uh, over a ten year over period. ten year period is roughly about uh, thirty two hundred per month or about, year? about twenty eight twenty nine per month per month. I talked about that, yeah, I, and I got those I got those stacks in case you asked me about it. Yeah, correct. Okay. And uh, I thought it was about thirty two whites every month moved out, and that was the net net effect for ten years. Correct. Mm -hmm. So about twenty nine hundred blacks moved into District Ten. Yeah, about about thirty two hundred. Let me get that. Thirty two hundred. Let me get that right. Moved into District Ten. Right. About twenty some twenty nine hundred, twenty seven hundred white moved. Out. No, let me get the right figure. Okay, please. Uh, so I could be exact. he's looking for that I'd also like to state that whatever ethnicity you claim whether it's Hispanic or whatever you're still a minority and so it doesn't matter whether you claim you're Hispanic black Hispanic white or just Hispanic it's still a minority class and so um, others are still based on the U.S. Census are considered minorities in the context of this country. <clears throat> Mr. Flo in the data you want on this chart right here that Mr. Commissioner yeah. Jackson's asking yeah. for? Yeah. I don't know. He was asking a little bit different from okay. Yes. I was trying to figure out how many blacks moved in. In, in 10 years, 3,432 blacks moved in to District 10. In 3,826 whites moved out. Okay. Right. Per month. And this is like per month. Per, per month. I, it was about 29 blacks moving in per month and about 32 whites moving out per month. And the rest, the other gap of the four or five, are others moved in. So Who are minorities? Uh, Those uh, others yeah. are still... It, it, it moved in. You had a, about four others, um, other races moved in. So it was a net gain in the district of 110 people in 10 years. And, and, but those others are still considered minorities. Black is black, right. 100 is, they're not white or they're not black, correct. Right. In, and I've, I've gone over this sheet several times in public hearings, and, and when it comes down to District 10, 3,826 white moved out, and 3,432 blacks moved in to District 10. So it went from, uh, I guess, a 58% black, I mean, white district down on the 50% based okay. on that. My correct. last question for you, Mr. Floyd. Mm -hmm. Based on the map, do you... Do you, did you get an end any, any indication whether the map was being moved further to the east or were they drawing the line further to the west? They, uh, District 10 went toward the east, you know, in terms of this, this precinct. And I imagine it was southeast. Right, southeast, correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Is that it, Commissioner Jackson? Uh, I haven't seen the map. I haven't even seen the map, but for me to sit here and just predict that it was moving southeast looks like that there was an intentional attempt to make district 10 wider 
Correct, correct. You know, because it, it took a, a purpose to uh, know that uh, it was already oversized that you needed to only remove a precinct, a part of a precinct, 1,081, but for you to go and take the two black majority precincts and add a white, it was purposely done, you know. That's what I'm saying, because you could easily, uh, like I said, uh, get it down under the plus 5% of 1,081. So that was a, you know, purposely. Okay. And District 10 had population to give as well. 100%. Okay, thank you. 100%. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chavez, uh, I'll yield for, I, I already spoke, so Commissioner Johnson can go. Commissioner Johnson. <laughs> yes, I uh, want to also, I guess, talk about, you made another uh, term that you called uh, retro retrogression. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain that to the public? Okay. <laughs> Retrogression is it's a baseline. Retrogression deals with a baseline as a result of the census. And then you measure the next plan based on the baseline. You know, so a district could be a uh, white majority in 2010, but applying the 2020 census is the, the baseline. And that's what courts do in section two and what the federal government did in section five. It then a plan is, is measured on that baseline or the benchmark. And it's retrogress, a retrogression when it falls below that when you can avoid doing it. Because sometimes you have a change in the demographics or so that, that it, 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 you can't help the change. But in this case, in District 10, you, you, know, you didn't have to uh, do much to, uh, to keep it where you found it at. So retrogression is, is measuring from the baseline, and the baseline is the benchmark. Okay. So and dilution is, uh, for example, uh, I worked in voting rights cases at large, the city of West Wego and Gretna had none. So you go in and say, hey, the population is 30% with five, so there's dilution, and it's not retrogression because you never had anything from get-go, okay? So dilution has no baseline, but retrogression has a baseline, and the baseline is applying the new census to the current plan. Okay. That is retrogression. Retrogression meaning that it's less powerful than what you found it. Right. Which means that they basically tried to dilute it. Well, correct. Or uh, minimize, they say in section two. Minimize, 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 correct. Yes, sir. The current effect of what it is. Uh huh. And then um, I'm going to say in years before that, some of these districts were actually um, gerrymandered and, and you had people of certain color packed into certain districts in order to make them a certain way. Uh, I've always said that you don't need 80% of a certain race in a particular district in order for it, it to be represented by a particular person. And so whenever, you know, when you do that, it sets a precedent of well, these, that's the only way that we can actually get this done, but in naturality, you didn't have to do it that way. It could, it could have been 65% to make it a winnable seat for a person of the majority race. Um, and in this situation, um, based upon what happened over the last 10 years, with the um, majority of the whites leaving out of Southern Hills, going to Keithville, going to DeSoto Parish, and going further south, and blacks then moving into the area, changed the look of District 10 over the last 10 years. Now, it was an effort to take what it looks like and take it back 10 years. We're moving forward, you know. I mean, in, in another 10 years, District 10 could be more like District 5 or District 4. I mean, District 5 or District uh, 2 or 3, where you have way more blacks. You could have 80% blacks in there because you're going to still have the, the flight out and going further south. And then other blacks will be moving into it, or other minorities that's gonna be moving into it. So uh, this, this, this has happened already in Shreveport over years. When you look at Western Hills, it was done the same way. And you look at Western Hills now, it's done the same way. So Southern Hills is, is approaching and doing the same thing as we speak now. So it, it's, it's not a way to stop the train other than to say, tell the folks to stay there. Everybody stay put. But as long as people are moving out, some people are going to move in. And they're going to move in for a better condition, better um, quality of life, and what they assume 
is somewhere better for them to stay. And for us to go in and try to change that to make it balanced, I think that's wrong. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Gage Watts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner Johnson alluded to some of uh, my notes here where I wanted you to actually identify um, or define some of those words that you were using for public knowledge, like gerrymandering, like cracking, stacking, fracking. And he also said something that I was going to allude to, that we have an opportunity to make sure that we're doing everything right, to make sure that we're not a part of that initiative. So it's important for us to look at these numbers um, to trust what is before us and to make the best decisions for the citizens of Cattle Parish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gage Watts. Commissioner Chavez, second time. Uh, yeah, I just want to go on the record because I was basically called out for asking about what Mr. Floyd said on the protected class uh, after he mentioned something about a language. It had nothing to do with the black uh, voter what, uh, whatever Commissioner Jackson said, uh, mine was merely a question of who was the spoken language and who was the protected class. So I thought that was a little out of line. So I want to go on the record just to say that. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. All right, last chance for questions for Mr. Floyd. Uh, Commissioner Young. Uh, oh, thank you. We've got several came up. Sorry, oh. Commissioner Young. Several <laughs> others came up before you. Commissioner Epperson, you're first. <coughs> I just want to say that uh, I don't know if people know the history of, uh, of Mexicans or whatever, but coming up in Wynn Parish in the 50s, a lot of uh, highway construction and major infrastructure was being done, and a lot of the Mexicans came in for as migrant workers, and we have always been receptive to them. They went to our black segregated schools lived in our black <coughs> neighborhoods, uh, even in the military. In the late 60s, when I went in, uh, there were issues there between the Mexicans, the Native Americans, but uh, the African Americans always embraced them, uh, places that they couldn't go. When we were in the United States, we'd bring them in our homes for holidays. Uh, they could come in our communities for recreation, and uh, I just believe, you know, in this day and time, demographics are changing. You know what I mean? And if you do your job and you get the respect of anybody, you can govern or get along with anybody. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want nothing stacked for me to win. I would want the heart and the will and respect that that constituency have for me irrespective to their racial makeup as the reason that I won that office. So I think this is kind of, it's embarrassing where we are today. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Commissioner Young, first time. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Floyd, I was wondering how um, or whether you take into account people who are, um, I think, maybe referred to as all or part black or all or part white. Um, in the in your breakdown, I use um, the category black, and and I think we talked about it when I passed out a couple of times this uh, uh, this paper right here. So I use I use black, you know. So I didn't get into all part or back and forth, white black, uh, black Indian or whatever. I use the the part black. And I consistently do that with, uh, I guess, the 30 plus clients. And so, so it, it, I guess it would be, uh, I guess, blacker, but uh, I didn't use, I use white, so I didn't use with the part white or part black, I use white and black. Okay. Do, mm -hmm. people, do people identify as those on the census? P people uh, could check what they want to check. I think sure. it's 11 categories. So, would they, so do you think they would be, if those people existed in District 10, that they would be represented in the others? Yeah. who are left mm -hmm. out from the two subtractions that you mentioned? C correct. Well, all okay. you do is take the t total, subtract white, and subtract yeah, black, and the other nine races uh, within that, uh, that category. So, so people who are of mixed heritage would probably find themselves in there. Right. In, in the, the okay. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Thank Young. you Commissioner Young. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, second time. 
uh, I just will just say that um, the question that was asked of Mr. Floyd was about why others were not being listed. And the census and drawing maps is a direct, I believe the census and redistricting comes out of the Voting Rights Act. Correct. And so when you start asking questions about others, you have to understand that the origins of this process comes from the Voting Rights Act. It also comes from, I don't know if it's a law, but one man, one vote. Am I saying it right? Mm -hmm. one, one, per, one, one person, one vote. One That's person, a new, thank yeah. You, thank you. Thank you so much for one person, one vote. One person, one vote. And yes, so sir. whether you are in the other category by the by the letter of the statute that defines this is still counted as a minority and that's why i'm talking about when we start trying to break down these different minorities in the context of the voting rights act there's only one race that the voting rights act speaks to with regard to discrimination because we have we were the only race to be discriminated against and so it does not speak to others uh, in that in that arena. So I don't want anybody to think that I was uh, just chastising them to get something off my chest. It's because there is out there in America and in this world this thought that the Voting Rights Act just fell out of the sky and Congress was looking for something to do. The Voting Rights Act was a response to racial discrimination against blacks with regard to access to the voting rights and with regards to access to or having representation that looked like them. And in Caddo Parish, we held we had a lawsuit. I can't remember who filed that lawsuit. Was it it wasn't the Bull lawsuit, was it? Bull or Bowl? One or the other, but which took this from a at large commission or at large public safety or whatever, police jury to individual commission districts because African Americans in this parish and at the city could not elect representation of their own. That is what this process is. And that's what we have to understand why are we here? Why are we doing this and why is it important? Because for a long time in Caddo Parish, and that's why we were at one point under the Preclearance Act, was because we did not have the ability to elect representatives that looked like us. The system, as Commissioner Epperson said, was fixed for a certain outcome. That's how we ended up with a Confederate monument in front of the courthouse statue paid for by taxpayer dollars. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and, and Mr. Atkins, I'll just, if you don't mind, do a little brief history. Give me uh, 14. Rose. Um, touching on a little history, I take pride when I work for a jurisdiction to make sure it's a fair redistricting plan. Uh, what happened is from 1965 uh, to 2013, exhibit 14. Jeff, you have to turn it on. Oh, what now? The screen over here? Yeah, thank you. It's, in, it's actually controlled in the back, but he's doing it. Thank you. It looks. Thank you. Thank you. What, what I did is uh, uh, doing this for 42 years, I do have the historical uh, uh, documents uh, concerning Section 5 preclearance since 1965. Wanted to show as you go down, Cattle has had a little trouble. When it comes down, stop it right there. When it comes down to redistricting, uh, back in 1971, uh, the school board plan was rejected, and uh, the next page, Rose. 1976, uh, annexations were rejected because it didn't include minority areas. The next page, Rose. And in 1983, this commission plan was rejected. July 11, 1983, because it wasn't reflective or it was retrogressive. Just want to show you a little history in uh, Louisiana. 
has had more Section 5 objections than any state in the, uh, in the country, 147. Uh, 60, I mean, two in 1960, 47 in the 1970s, 21 in the 1980s, uh, 68 in the 1990s, and it stopped in 2013, and nine and in 2000, plans that were rejected by the Justice Department. And each one, every jurisdiction is highlighted there from annexations, the redistricting plan, uh, throughout. So I would urge you to move forward uh, with plan A-1 that is reflective of Carroll Parish with the 2020 uh, census. Okay, Mr. Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that, you know, kind of spent a lot of time talking about the others. And when you look at others gonna fall under minorities, um, <clears throat> minority race. You know, if you look at white, black in District 10, you had 51.71% black, 40.66% white. That's right at 92%. So you're talking about 8%. 8% it's not going to make a difference when you got 92% black white. Uh, in all the districts, majority are black white. So to encompass the other, you're talking about 10% or less. Um, I, I don't really get the, the angle of trying to bring the others in when the majority races in Cattle <coughs> Parish is black or white. Whether it's mixed black, mixed white, we all got some mixture in us. I mean, you can have a white person who is considered black by the state law of having enough black blood in them, but they look white. So therefore, you can't go by that. It's basically how you fill out the census, black, white, and then if there is any of the other ones being used, you fall in the others. But it's clear in black and white here that the majority of races in, in the 12 districts are black and white. So no sense of bringing up others and why they wasn't accounted for here and why they weren't accounted for there. And when you know that if you add up to two black and white, there's a difference. It doesn't equal 100%. So let's move forward and quit wasting time. Is that it, Commissioner Johnson? That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Hopkins. I just want to say I, I think it was important for us to to have and look at an alternate plan. Yes. I mean, that's that's what we've been asking for. That's what he brought to us. You know, I agree that it's it's one one person, one vote, but there's a lot of other little feathers that go into that. I mean, there's there's 18 to and above. There's Hispanic, non-white, Hispanic, non-black. There's black all in part. I mean, there's all kinds of things to look at. There's even historical areas to look at when you're doing redistricting trying to keep a place like Cedar Grove together, or a place like um, Allen, you know, trying to keep those places together. There's part, that's all part of it. So I think it's important that we, we look at this. I still believe that plan is a good plan. I disagree uh, with Mr. Floyd on, on some of his numbers, but that's okay, we can disagree. That's the way it is. He has his plan, we have an alternate plan. We go in Thursday, we can turn it down and vote his in, or we can turn his down and vote ours in, or we'll just figure out something and, and go from there. I mean, that's, that's, that's basically where we're at. Um, that's basically the end. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hopkins. Commissioner um, Young, I'm not sure where Commissioner Jackson feels in. Go ahead, Commissioner Young, we'll come Thank back you. to Commissioner Thank Jackson. you, Mr. President. Um, I agree with Commissioner Johnson that it would be nice to have uh, competitive districts in as many places as possible. I don't think my district benefits from being 80% one race and party. I think it would be better if it was closer to, you know, shared. I think we would result with more moderate candidates that way. I wonder if there's any way to um, tweak some of the precincts in District 10 as a compromise to make it more like 43 white and 48 black instead of 40 and 51 percent white well, and black. Well, may I finish asking my question? Okay, good, no problem. Uh, do you think there's like, um, you know, hundreds instead of thousands of people who could be put in the right places to make it 
um, satisfy non-retrogression, but also be a more competitive district? I was just going to wait until you finish. I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's competitive now. You know, uh, a case in point, uh, school so board. I asked, so I asked a particular question about particular numbers, not whether yeah, you think it's competitive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just getting ready to say, District 10 in the A1 plan is the same uh, District 10 in the school board plan, and in the primary election November 8th, it was competitive, but the Republican won. In the, in the proposal, it's, it's competitive now. I don't know uh, what is defined as competitive other than what District 10 is. So I, I gave numbers instead of, I said comp competitive, but I also said could, it, could we tweak it so that it was like 43% white and 48% black instead of 40% white and 51% black and still be within the... I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to look at it in terms of uh, what is what. You know, I'm willing, you know, like I say, if it's between the goalposts, um, willing to look at it. That might, I mean, that might be something that pleased some of the partisan interests on this panel. Uh, but I think the others are a little bit larger than that, but, you know, I'd, like I said, sure. uh, I'm willing to look at. Well, so and, right and now the numbers are, it looks like they're outside of a acceptable range, but, like, there might be some wiggle room in that range that would um, bring the population even closer to parity and make, um, you know, and make the representative from that district feel happy and make other people up here feel like they had a compromise. Okay. So note it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Young. Um, Commissioner Jackson? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, I would like to uh, also bring to this commission's attention at the last Long Range Planning Committee meeting, there were dozens of citizens who came down and talked about how they, under the city council plan, were moved around, had no knowledge. Um, and I think that uh, failure was on the city council to adopt a map that didn't have much public input, that didn't have much public comment, um, and I would hope that we would not follow that same lead because what's going to happen is in our election, the same thing is going to happen and voters are going to come down and be highly frustrated. And, you know, the onus I think is on us to educate the public on what we decide to do. And so I don't know that the community has had a chance to look at this. I know that there were several uh, commissioners here that did plan, that did community meetings. Uh, and I do not believe that this map that is here today was a part of, was, did y'all talk about this map at any of those meetings? It was not in existence. I, I think, got the map, I think it was on November the 16th. So it was, it, it was never up on the website. A1 has been on the website um, uh, since, the, the plan has been on the website since yeah. July. So, yeah, so, so alternate, like I said, I would recommend that this plan uh, uh, expose the, the commission to a section two voting rights uh, thing based on all the evidence or so. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, lawsuits cost a lot of money, but people, the, the commission, uh, y'all have to do what y'all need to do. Yeah. Because, you know, back in, uh, I would say back in 1986, I was part of a lawsuit against my whole home parish, Jefferson Parish. And end up selling 70, uh, 70 on a, a seven, 70 cents on a dollar. It was about four hundred and fifty five thousand dollars on one side to the plaintiffs, and that's what was paid to Felch Dunbar, who lost the case. Thank so you. cases, when it comes down to Section Two, do could easily be a million dollars when it comes down to litigation. And no parish, a school board, a city has ever won a Section Two case in Louisiana about vote dilution. And I've tracked it since 1981. So I would just ask us whatever, whether we make the districts more competitive as I heard, whatever we decide to do, I think we need to ensure that there's robust public input on the plan and not just drop a plan and assume that residents are going to know what we did. Thank you, Mr. President. That's it for me. And, and Mr. Atkins, if I could say this, Rose turned up uh, uh, 15. I wanted to, I guess, some uh, Commissioner Young had spoke about uh, possibility. I don't know. I've looked at A1 and, and, and done this and wanted to sh uh, show you in, in preparation for this meeting, I uh, sent to the Secretary of State a couple of months ago exactly uh, what parishes uh, that had not done redistricting plans and submitted to the Secretary of State. And as of uh, uh, Friday, it was 25 parishes 
that had not done redistricting plans uh, and submitted to the Secretary of State. So I'm going to give that to Jeff Porter, the record. Uh, got a little time. Uh, uh, what happens is uh, the city of New Orleans, because so, I keep up, they have in their charter, if you don't redistrict in six months, you don't get paid as council members. Uh, and uh, a lot of charters have, home rule charters, the end of the second year after the census. It's a little messed up this time because uh, President Trump did not receive the census on December 31st, 2020. It wasn't Joe Biden to, I think it was April, so they kind of changed the date for school boards and kind of changed the date the second year. Say that to say, what was sent to each register of voters and clerk of court just Friday afternoon, keep on going, Rose. Keep on going all the way to the end. Yeah, so Friday afternoon, this is the set right there, that when it comes down to redistricting plans, uh, state law, not the charter, your charter, is July 11th. Okay. State law is July 11th? July 11th. Your, your, your charter is December 31st this year. Okay. Just want to let you know, and it's 25 parishes that have not done turning redistricting plans to the Secretary of State as of Friday. And I want to get that in, in preparation. Thank you. Um, okay. Commissioner Chavez, are you back on the board? Go ahead. Thanks, President. Mr. Floyd, I know this is a time crunch, but um, Commissioner Young had a good point. Uh, I feel like we have one side of a plan and another side of a plan. I, I think a, a good middle of the ground that may fit everybody in this body would be uh, when you say you're going to look at something for District 10 and come back to us, you think you could supply that to us by Thursday? That I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, when I say supply, what what I what I've done is that um, um, took the meetings I had to each whoever wanted the meeting input public hearings, and I I tried to change District 10 to be as less change as possible to be reflective of the 2020 baseline plan. So that's what I'm saying. So uh, uh, if you like your present plan, that is the District 10 at A1. So you know that's you know, I'm just telling you that's that is your district. All I did is uh, uh, take I, I took out uh, half white and half black that precinct that that I think 92. That's your district, and the, the school board was elected from it. If in fact that you didn't have the census, you'd be running from that plan at the next time. Okay, uh, just so happened, uh, I, like I said, I try to keep up. Uh, East Baton Rouge School Board, they had trouble with their plan. So what the court did, made them run from their malapportioned plan, which is their old plan. So what you're pretty much saying is that District 10, how it is, you don't like. If so, that, that's District 10 in A1. That's District 10 that you were elected from in 2019. The, the district change district ten has not has not changed from what you represent today. You know, so I don't mind looking at it, but district ten is what it is when you ran pretty much ran in twenty nineteen or twenty fifteen. So I like the way it is, but what I'm saying is, uh, it sounds like we have a divided horseshoe. Uh, so so having a uh, a middle pr a middle ground middle plan may be a good idea. I don't I don't mind, but think about it. We have a threshold when it comes down to the law, so it might be tugged back and forth. But I, I don't do plans that I know that is retrogressive or uh, dilutive, because I don't have I, I will never get a plan that's going to be uh, taken to court. Uh, at all, and just about everybody else has had plans taken to court. I don't, you, you, you meaning that you could do the alternative plan, but if the plan purposely goes below the benchmark, then I wipe my hand from it. That's all I'm saying. I'll look at it because I'm open to it. Like I said, the goalpost just like looking at this, but uh, the school board adopted District 10, just taking that one precinct out, and it was a competitive plan. You could see who won the election November the 8th. And like I said, if you like the present District 10, that's what you have in the proposed plan. So all it did is took out a precinct that was 50-50, white and black, and that's what you have. But what you've done in, in the alternate plan is take out 3,000 blacks and added that. So that kind of changed the demographics of the plan that you didn't have to do it because all it was oversized was 1,081. So I'll look at it. I'm willing to look at it, you know, just that uh, and, and, and to see. But I don't uh, know if I'm able to come up with something because let me just tell you this, though. It comes down to public hearings. To each one of y'all uh, have a right to, uh, to meet with me about it, to change public hearings or so. We did that. 
Now, I was ready to go in July when we had the two public hearings here in terms of adopting the plan, but we had public hearings. So, so that's what we had. So I'm willing to look at it and to see. Maybe you could see something in terms of if we could uh, uh, take some people out of another precinct other than taking, I think, Precinct 92 to see exactly what. So, and I'll wrap this up. So by Thursday, Mr. Floyd, do you think w while you're looking at it, you can send uh, maybe an email to the president just on looking at District 10 and, and the variations that you're looking at uh, that if it would fit within the benchmark? Would you email the president just to let us know? Your I, I don't know because just so happened, uh, as you know, I just came back from seeing from 19 to 29 and I'm dealing with Ponchatoula and Faraday and Simsport or so. So it's not like this. I, I was going to be around for the meeting on Thursday, but I was doing other uh, jurisdictions, uh, uh, Sabine, uh, Polish so Jury. I'm yes doing, no? Na I'm doing yes Natchitoches no? Parish Council in the city of Natchitoches. So it's not like a, I, I hadn't kind of uh, just hit the ground uh, last Tuesday when I came home and it was kind of behind. But I, I don't know if I could uh, 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 give it justice to do that, and then everybody would want to see it in terms of having an alternative plan. I wouldn't want to do that because we had public hearings or so. I don't know about the turnaround in terms of it, you know, in, in terms of how much time I have. I think it's kind of limited. So, you know, but you have a, you know, so what I'm trying to say is that I don't know if I could do it by December the 8th in terms of that, but I'm willing to look at it. It's going to be past that. I, I yield back, President. That's what I'm saying. It, you know, I don't think I will be able to. Uh, review everything between now and December the 8th, which you saw on another plan. Okay. And, uh, uh, if you wanted to be go be look beyond that, that's up to the commission in terms of this process. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I've been told that Commissioner Burrell showing up on my tablet is actually uh, Ms. Frazier. That is correct. I just wanted to speak to the last letter from the Secretary of State <laughs> and um, I'll need to call tomorrow to verify because I just saw that today uh, prior to the meeting. Mr. Floyd was kind enough to show it to me. But that July 11th is likely referring to their deadline by which they will qualify your candidates um, for the fall election. It does not refer to the election code or the parish charter, which requires that this be done by December 31st. Ms. Frazier, if I could tell you, that goes with four weeks before qualifying. So qualifying will be in August. So that's, you know, let me just let you know that July is, it's about redistricting plans being submitted four weeks before qualifying. And we certainly, we've seen what happens uh, when we don't have enough time for all the voting maps to get in right. order before. before right, 100%. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ms. Frazier. Let's see, Commissioner Johnson last, last time maybe, or is that old? No, this is new one. Uh, I, I think, you know, this is very funny to me. We hired someone to come in who did not know anything about cattle pairs that was going to give us a open-minded look at how we can redistrict the pairs uh, and it still is no good uh, you know we, we dealt we dealt in the past with somebody who knew Shreveport politics knew where to draw the line here knew where to put that line there knew how to, to keep certain people satisfied and now we got somebody that came in that knew nothing about cattle pairs, politics, lines, and based upon his professional knowledge, drew 12 districts. <clears throat> in those 12 districts, they came out the way that they did. And then the last comment I just heard was, so District 10 is 51.7% black. Well, let's get it down to 48% uh, black. I mean, really? Go through all that process to eliminate 3% of the black and put, uh, I guess, 3% white in the same area? That, that doesn't make any sense. And that goes to retrogression, what he just got through talking about. Right now, it's at 51, uh, 52%, rounded up. It's at 52%. So why go down? Just because that's where I stay in and that's why I represent and I want it to be a little bit lower? It's not that way now. The people moved into that area. People moved out of that area. Within 20 years, District 2 could be um, more white than it is black. If if the parish grows from the north, you got to start pulling people down, and that District 1 line will come further down, and District 2 line will move further up. It could change. But that is the chance that it takes over the period of 10 years. So, you know, I've done this twice. 
last plan we had was almost, if I'm uh, right, Commissioner Nelson, almost 16 plans because we couldn't get it right. There was always this one here was over here, this over, and we talked about uh, Commissioner Hopkins. You said about keeping Cedar Grove com in one district. Well, the last time they initially split Cedar Grove and Eden Garden, initially, because that's how they wanted. The majority of the votes went that way to do it that way. We got to be consistent on what we're doing. I mean, when you look at, we're not talking about. 12 districts. We only talking about one district. Everybody been talking about one district. And that's 10. That's all one y'all can see that's controversial. Everybody else, I guess, seemed to be satisfied with theirs or within a range of satisfaction. But 10. 10 is the one that has changed. And everybody knows 10 has changed. So if it's changed, it's changed. And like I mentioned earlier, a long time ago, Western Hill changed. It's done changed. Can't go back. It's already done changed. So why would we why would we fudge numbers or move people around just to give them misrepresentation? Because them three thousand blacks you taking out of District Ten, you put them into a white district. So are they gonna have equal representation based upon where they are now? Because they're in a majority district now, they go into a minority status in the new district that you're trying to put them in. So what are we doing? And even the, the 3,000 whites you're moving around, they go from majority white district to potentially uh, even to majority black district. So people move where they wanted to be staying at over this over this 10 year period of time. And we don't waste it, I want to say almost a whole hour, talking about one district. And, and Mr. Johnson, if I could say. Let's just, let's just. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to uh, get through the rest of the people on the okay. board and then move on with our agenda, Commissioner Johnson. I'm done. Okay. okay. You know, I think we've only supposed to have two times to talk, but I'm done. I know, I know. We've, I've been, this is an important issue, so I've tried to let everybody speak their piece. Mr. Floyd, hold on one moment. No problem. Please. I'll give you the last final parting no, word. No problem. Commissioner Epperson. I just want to thank Mr. Floyd. We ought to let him go and we move on. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, last word? Yeah, I just wanted to just say, I think the word retrogression is a nice way to put it. To move, intentionally move 3,000 blacks out of a district <clears throat> and place them in a district where they would be minority is racist. And let's call a thing a thing. It's racist. What we're saying is, instead of creating another black majority district here in Caddo Parish, we want to preserve the status quo. That's racism. I'm willing to look anybody in their face and say it. That's racism. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. All right, no, nobody else on the board. Mr. Floyd, real tight. No, my, I'm going to be less. I talk real fast. You can ask no, my wife. No, not, not not fast, just short. <laughs> short. That is this. When it comes down to plan A-1, it's in the middle of the road because when it comes down to District 10, you could have easily taken out Precinct 115 that would move the district to 58, 59 percent black. So that Precinct 92 was in the middle of the road, uh, what you talk about, Commissioner Young, because one of the possibilities could have been keep District 10 intact and take 115 out. So that was one extreme. Another extreme to take, uh, uh, and that was a white precinct, all black or in the middle. So that so uh, uh, A1 is in the middle because 115 is the, to the, uh, would have everybody howling and screaming, but that was in within the goalpost that you could have taken out. And, and precinct 115 was 87% white, 2,088, 1,822 white and 82 black. And that would have moved the district close to 60% District 10. Okay, thank you. Okay, just wanted, to, just wanted to tell you in terms of uh, uh, the A1 plan, where it's at at 52 something, meets the middle because 115 is the extreme that you could have very well done and be within the guidelines. Okay? Thank you for coming down, Mr. Floyd. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Rose. All right. Well, Mr. Floyd and Rose pick up. Uh, we can move on with the agenda. The uh, next item on your agenda today is a master plan update. Um, 
And I know that Mr. Clark is here. I don't know if he is planning on. Was this a requested item, <coughs> a master plan update? or it, It's a standard. Your first meeting of the month at your work session is a standard update. So he may or may not have one today. It's just a regular. Um, kind of a placeholder? Yeah, regular <coughs> placeholder in case he has something to report. Mr. Clark, if you have something to add, please I'll be do. Very, I'll be very brief, uh, Mr. President. Uh, today we started a, a process with long-range planning that we should be extremely excited about because we are actually beginning to address the master plan and the, the fairness and the equity of the master plan for the unincorporated areas of Caddo. Uh, we will be getting back with you uh, in long range planning to give you updates on our progress. And uh, we, as this process evolved, I think that we will be much more satisfied with the end results than we've been to this point. That's all I have to say, sir. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, that uh, brings us to our report section where the first item we have today is an administrative report. You should have it attached as well as your November financials are attached to your agenda. Dr. Wilson? Yeah, good afternoon, Commissioner Atkins, the commissioners. Um, we have a few items today, and we did invite the National Development Corp Council to come and appear before you today and kind of give us an update on where we are with respect to the, the housing trust fund. Okay. And how we use the opera funds. So I'd like to invite Mr. Shelton Botello to come up with his team. And he will introduce his team. And uh, they kind of give us an overview of, of what's going on with the Housing Trust Fund. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that name. But Mr. Mr. Shelton Bortel. Bortel? Bortel, Bar, B-A-R. Martel. Martel. Please c come to the podium, Mr. Martel, with your team. Welcome. Is it Mr. Martel or Dr. Martel? He, he, he hasn't boy. Martel, Martel, not Martel. Bartel. Bartel. Okay. B A R T E L. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioners, Mr. thank Martel you for having here. us here today. I would like to point out my two colleagues, uh, Patricia Santa Cruz, is team member with me on the central team, and our team leader, Raquel Favela. Welcome, ladies. So, uh, just to keep it short and sweet, I see how long your agenda is. Uh, we were hired or put under contract with the parish in January of this year to complete an affordable housing plan for the housing trust fund. In other words, do a market study, look at the needs, come up with a plan to address that. The housing trust fund sees some resources, some cash in from different sources that could be directed to those priority housing, affordable housing needs across the county. Unfortunately, we've run into some, you know, uh, storms along the way. Uh, first being um, compliance issues. Um, three awards were made earlier in the year for ARPA funds. And it was determined after some research and reviewing the process that, you know, that violated ARPA ordinances. So at that point, we decided to go back to the drawing board and come up and meet the regular or the, the real compliance guidelines, which is a request for proposal process for the distribution of those funds. Um, putting all that aside, uh, the administration and us, we put together a, a request for proposal. It went out, come back, and we got four proposals for the distribution of $2 million. Uh, we'll work with staff to review those December 15th and decide how those will be allocated. Uh, one of the other things that kind of took up some time, otherwise we would be further along in terms of completing a needs assessment you know, the target, objective, policies and procedures. One of the other things came up was uh, a proposed project or almost, without saying it in any way, as an experiment. Um, the Louisiana Housing Corporation uh, considered a subreciprient agreement with the Caddo Parish uh, to transfer some funds home funds to the parish which could be invested in a particular project here in 
actually, I think it's in Shreveport, 114 Texas. Um, we went through that process and after some hard questions were asked, we kind of identified that um, even that wasn't a straightforward process. Um, Louisiana Housing Corporation kept referring to the parish as the city of Shreveport. Uh, we recommended that some of their ordinances or board decisions or board memorandums be adjusted so the parish could become an eligible recipient. But all that aside, that's gone away now. Uh, we do know the developer of 114 Texas has responded to the RFP for some funding, hopefully to redevelop that property into some affordable housing units. So I'm actually here in front of you today to just say that moving forward, really where we want to be is taking a deep pause after this RFP is done and awards are made so that we can work with staff to complete that needs assessment countywide. What are the affordable housing needs across all your districts within the county? The, uh, I apologize, I come from county. Mm -hmm. too, too used to saying that. Uh, throughout the parish, what are those affordable housing needs? You know, what are the policies and procedures that you want your staff to have to make sure that when you get funds or we pursue, help you identify pots of federal money or state money to meet those needs? What are the policies and procedures you want to have in place to make sure those funds are used correctly? We also want to talk about, you know, possible staffing. At this time, having worked with the administration, a few of them over the past 12 months, um, you know, they have many, many irons in the fire, and it's kind of hard for them to spend as much time as they need to on affordable housing across the parish. So I'll stop right there after that brief update and uh, take any questions. Commissioner Jackson, is that you on the board? Yeah, let me just, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Let me say, uh, Mr. Bartell, you, you made some statements that I want to object to pretty harshly about the housing corporation and the process not being straightforward. The process was straightforward, okay? We have to be careful what we say here because this is a public record, okay? The process was straightforward. It was determined that based on what was required, that the parish was not sufficiently set up to accept those funds. But every conversation was recorded. Every email is documented. But please don't come here and say that it was not straightforward. Just like you just mispronunciated, you mistook us as a county when we were a parish down south they deal with consolidated government, where they deal with more city, county, city, parish, government, as opposed to dealing with the parish. So just like you just made your mistake, they're entitled to make their mistake. So that doesn't mean it was not straightforward. And I want to be very clear to NDC as well as to the parish staff. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that the parish staff wouldn't sit back and allow something to be put out there and say that it wasn't straightforward because words have meanings and issues take on a life of their own when they hear stuff like that. And if something wasn't straightforward about that process, I wish y'all would say that it wasn't straightforward as opposed to getting down here on a public record here somewhat straightforward. Because the housing corporation wanted to be our partners on that deal. And what they wanted to do was give the parish an opportunity to get housing experience, housing development experience. And so they thought outside of the box and said, we'll send the money directly to the parish and let the parish administer the funds. But as you just identified, there's a staffing issue. There's a capacity issue. There's a knowledge issue. Not an issue of straightforwardness. 
So I want to be very clear because words have meanings. And I think that the option is still on the table in the future for if we want to do a project with the housing corporation, that when we get the staffing and the capacity to do it, that they're willing to do it. Because Caddo Parish does not receive home funds. The state receives the home funds for the parish. And what they're simply saying is, instead of us doing it here, if y'all want to do it, we'll let you all do it. So I just have to make sure I correct you and correct this record and make sure that this record is right about what actually happened. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Uh, the gentleman made mention of 114 Texas Street. Is, uh, and I, I don't know what was going on with this. What, this was the building that burned downtown. Was it uh, the housing tr trust fund? The, um, your organization was going to help get this back into commerce and we were going to get affordable housing for people in this building? Is this we reached out because the building burned down? What's I'm trying to understand what, what's going on where these guys came into play with this building, with this building specifically? Uh, that was via the Housing Trust Fund, the funds that Commissioner Jackson had said were going to be flowed through the Louisiana Housing Corporation were home funds, and they were going to be sent to the parish uh, for use on redevelopment of that property. However, there were a lot of questions about that property, uh, ownership, etc., and then it burned down. I understand. So, Commissioner Jackson, obviously the champion for downtown, that's his district. Um, so, is because that burned down, are, are we still in the works where we're going to identify another downtown building to get affordable housing? Uh, we are still working on that. They did respond to the parish's request for proposal for use of funds to develop affordable housing. That was one of four applications gotcha. the okay. parish received. All right. So, it's in the running. Thank you. Thanks, President. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? I see no one else on the board. Mr. Bartell, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Wilson, you're still, uh, you still have the floor? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Uh, commissioners, we, we have uh, 23 children in detention, four are waiting OJJ uh, transportation uh, for their custody. We have uh, 10 uh, of the 23 are 17 year olds, and we have eight. Uh, children at uh, CCC. Also, we have uh, two COVID infections um, in the last few weeks. As of today, we have zero, and we have one reporting from one of our agencies on a COVID uh, infection uh, situation. Also, um, you should have before you the, 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 the um, November 22nd, um, 2020 uh, financial report. And also uh, this Thursday morning at 10 at 8:30, we'll be at um, the Audi uh, dealership in Shreveport doing toys for tots, and we do appreciate all the uh, employee councils heading us up for us, and it's a success every year. We appreciate everybody that <coughs> make donations to that effort to help uh, brighten the uh, young child's uh, Christmas morning where they may lack resources. So those are the things that are going on. Uh, with respect to um, other administrative matters. And could you please remind me again of the day and time of the uh, It's Thursday morning, this coming Thursday at 8.30. Okay. At the Audi uh, dealership in Shreveport of the Burkhams Industrial. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I have a quick question for you, Dr. Wilson. Yes, sir. No one, well, Dr. Commissioner Young, go, go ahead. First. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Wilson, when you talk about 23 in detention, and then eight at CCC. Yes, sir. Are those eight at CCC in addition to the 23? Uh, yes. So, I mean, don't yes. we just have 21 pods at, C at, at juvenile detention? Yeah, 24. We have 24. Okay. We have 20, yeah, we have 24. <laughs> okay, thank you. That clarifies okay. my, my misunderstanding of the situation. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Commissioner Young. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. President. Mm -hmm. um, you said four, I think? From juvenile were scheduled for um, for transfer to OJJ custody. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Usually uh, that number is that, um, is, has OJJ custody recommenced. I read that they were not able to house anymore. Well, it's, it's kind of tough moving kids within the OJJ system right now because they are they are overbooked all over the place. 
Right. So, so, so we have 23, and they're probably not, the OJJ kids probably aren't leaving. What do me? Or are they leaving? I'm not sure. Yeah. Play Director Play Walker's walking Play up. Good evening, and, and yes, Commissioner, I read what you read, and I heard that same thing that um, OJJ wrote a letter about two weeks ago now saying that they were full and had 50 children in the line in the queue to come in. Um, nevertheless, they have still moved a few kids, so I've not seen it completely shut off. Um, we've moved two kids in the last th two, three days. Um, it's still difficult. It, it's still backed up, um, but they are moving. Uh, so we have 23 now. Yes. And we don't have the regular draining that goes from the OJJ taking. Not as quickly as it should could be. So we only have space for one more kid to be detained, and then, and then we're gonna. What what happens then? Do the judges let out people they think are lowest risk? It it's a it is our constant effort. I mean, we're looking at the kids. We have a a, a recommendation of three or four now that we think that could be released with possibly a little more supervision in the community, possibly an ankle monitor, do something where we would um, try to get them out, but we do that pretty regularly. This past weekend we got to full capacity and had to be working over the weekend to get some kids out. Those kids um, that were let out over the weekend, do you, do you remember what kinds of things they had done to get detained? I do not. I do not. Is it, what are the ranges of things that people are detained for now from which they might have been released? I mean, I would say what, what children are always detained is any kind of violence. Any, so, and I say any kind of, a school fight would not be detained, would not come to detention. Any kind of serious felony violence is almost always held. So the, so the kids who were released were likely to have been um, accused of violence? No, I would say if they're released, we, we do a risk assessment lower risk and maybe some moderate risk kids would be released the moderate to high risk are retained and so any kind of violence is retained is okay, remained. So what kind of what kind of um what kind of offenses get released um so probably the more serious kids that do get released that we'd be concerned about for public safety are going to be burglary cases and what would what we do with burglary is you get a gps ankle monitor and in that way, I can determine that you are in your house the entirety of the night, you know, didn't leave, we're not running the streets. Or who else's house you were in. What? Or who else's house you were in. Or, frankly, there have been a few times when they <laughs> continue to do something foolish and we actually use the monitor to catch them committing a crime, yes. Okay. That's what the monitors are good for. Thank you, Director Walker. That's all my questions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Young. All right. Um, Dr. Wilson, are you done? It includes my report, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clerk? Okay, that brings us to commission remarks. Um, and again, if you could use the request to speak on your um, tablet there uh, to get in line for communiques. Uh, we are at communiques reports and other items related to the work session agenda. Okay, please uh, get on the board if you have something to say regarding the work session agenda. Seeing no one on the board. Okay, that brings us to President's report then. Well, I will stay, uh, I, before we go on, I just wanna make sure, I wanna make sure I did not move forward too quickly. Y'all good with moving ahead? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll mention that uh, the S&P 500 report, or pardon me, the S&P uh, report that I read recently on our bond, um, or our, our bond rating status being dropped at one level from AAA to to double uh, A plus, I was disappointed to see that drop. Um, but I will say, after reading the report and um, and hearing from you guys, I know that that was largely due to the demographics of Caddo Parish and the declining uh, population and job market in Caddo Parish. It was not a reflection of the Caddo Parish uh, bodies. Uh, work or efforts they actually positively commented on the controls and procedures that our finance department has in place and the good work that they do so uh, while I was disappointed to see that drop I, I was pleased that it wasn't a reflection of the performance of our team uh, I will ask uh, Erica that uh, whoever has the relationship with the SAP and S&P analysts you might 
contact them and let them know that we're located on the Red River and not the Mississippi River. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're being judgmental of us, but they have certain uh, problems of their own. So I, I would like to see that corrected uh, for, on, their, on their official documents moving forward. I think it wasn't, it was like several times we were mentioned to be on the Mississippi River. So. Right. Uh, we will make sure uh, Grant, our bond attorney, will contact them and say we are on the Red River. Right. Or is that Grant? Grant is the one that uh, needs to talk to those guys? Yes, sir. He works closely. <coughs> yes, you may, Grant. Um, your characterization is completely correct. Um, I had the initial call with the analysts uh, prior to the extensive work up from Erica and others with the administration. And uh, the indication was that they were considering a downgrade. The analyst, senior analyst, made it very clear that it had nothing to do with the performance of the Cattle Parish Commission. As a matter of fact, if you look back to the credit report, the prior credit report, you guys are much stronger than when that report was written that affirmed the AAA. They uh, made it very, very clear it was S&P policy, Looking at the demographics, looking at the 10-year trend on population decline, and that was it 100%. We ask that they reflect that factor in the credit report, and that's what you read. But it was clearly not the case of anything with the financial aspects of the Cattle Parish Commission. You guys are stronger than in the last affirmed the AAA. Thank you very much. Thank you for the comment. That's and it for we also did express our displeasure to S and P. Okay, and hopefully correct correct the uh, the river. We'll work on it next time. Thank you, um, Mr. Clerk. That's all from from me. Thank you. That brings us to uh, old business. We have none today, so we'll move forward to new business. And our first item under new business is going to be twelve point one, authorizing the introduction of ordinance number sixty two ninety seven of twenty twenty two. It's an ordinance amending the 2022 budget, of, uh, budget to amend the budget of estimated revenues and expenditures for the Section 8 fund. Move to approve. Second. We have a or move to introduce. We have a motion from Commissioner Jackson to introduce a second from Commissioner Hopkins. Any comments, Commissioner Jackson? Uh, I just have a question uh, of administration. Have we have start having a conversation? Who administers? Does the Housing Authority administer this for us? Okay, have we started having the conversation about um, how uh, we could use our, uh, and I don't, one, I don't know that the name is still called Section 8, I believe it's called Housing Choice Vouchers. Um, that may just be the old language there, so if we could uh, maybe make sure that we reflect the 2020, 2022 Term. variation of terminologies, Section 8 was a stigma that kind of uh, held over from the seven, the 70s. I think it's called housing choice vouchers now, but that's neither here nor there. But I do know that there is a provision that allows the vouchers to be able to be utilized for uh, home ownership. Uh, and so, again, not trying to get into the weeds on that, but I would like to ensure that we are having a conversation at the parish level about um, there is a, a provision that allows for housing choice vouchers, same as Section 8. Uh, I think Section 8 is the code or whatever that created the program, but the actual title of the program is called housing choice vouchers that allows these revenues to be used for individuals to go toward the purchase or down payment um, of a home. And so we do want to make sure we're emphasizing home ownership um, within our low to moderate income community. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Seeing no one else on the board, let's vote, please. Okay, and um, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Attorney Frazier, could you click uh, because you're using a test machine that's uh, Commissioner Burrell's. Could you click um, absent or abstain? Thank you. And Commissioner no. Taliaferro is out of the room. And so Linda, I believe you can acknowledge him as you can acknowledge Commissioner Taliaferro is absent right now. Can you hit? Can you hit his uh, abstain? Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. 
Okay, that motion carries. All right, <coughs> let's carry on, please, sir. And I'm sorry, that is nine uh, and nine in support, uh, two uh, none in opposition, and uh, one absent. Why does it say six did not vote? Uh, so there, on these categories, you're going to have some voting members who are, um, who I mean, I'm sorry, there are going to be some members who are not voting members. So in the future, those four over there, Linda and I, that's that six. Okay. Um, so yes, and this will be a little bit more clear as we are able to adopt okay. more features of this no, each time. It'll, it'll be very clear to you. Thank you. That brings us to our next item, which is authorizing the um, introduction of ordinance number 6298 of 2022. That's an ordinance relative to the Move compensation. To second. We have a motion from Commissioner Johnson to advance a second by Commissioner Talfaro. Would you like to comment, Commissioner Johnson? Nope. 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 We got you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Epperson was the second, not Commissioner Talfaro. Was old, I hearing something? Old, old man and technology do work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, all right, Commissioner Johnson, would you like to comment? No. No? Okay. Uh, anyone on the board? Commissioner Chavez? Thanks, President. I just had a, a, a clarification of this. I saw that it was raised by $100 for every board member. How, how does it take uh, into effect the President? The President will still make the extra $100. Okay. That was my only clarification. Thank you. Commissioner Hopkins? Uh, yeah, I, I know we, we, we look at this every few years, but uh, I, I still feel the same about compensation. And I won't be supporting it, but I understand you bring it back, Mr. Johnson. Commissioner Jackson? Never mind. Commissioner Johnson? Yeah, I'm just going to say that um, this does not take effect this term. It's next term. Um, also, it has to be done the year before the term ends. So this is the last month for this. So if it fails today, then next term, there's no getting it. Okay. And I think, you know, with inflation, no cost of living for the last, I think it was five, six years. Um, and as you, as you are a commissioner and you actually visit your district and visit other places within Cattle Parish, you know, things have gone up, gas has gone up, and that doesn't come on a uh, expense report that you can get gas <coughs> for that because that's all a part of what you're doing as a commissioner. So just, just to say that next term, you're about to get a little raise in order to compensate you for the inflation that has went on over the last five, six years. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Johnson. I will comment that um, I, uh, I, I won't be supporting this, this proposal. However, I do want to emphasize that Commissioner Johnson will not be on, on the commission next term. Uh, so he's not proposing this for his own benefit. He's proposing it for future commissioners. I think it's important that we make that distinction here. All right, seeing no one else. Oh, Commissioner Jackson's on the board. All, All right, right, seeing no one else on the board, let's vote, please. Okay, that uh, motion does not advance uh, with um, four in support, uh, five in opposition, one abstaining, and two absent. Um, that brings us to. Um, Let's see, the next item is uh, authorizing resolution number 52 of 2022. That's a resolution to request the Parish Planning and Zoning Commission to create an R143 district or zone. Move to advance and to put on the first regular session meeting in January. The first regular session meeting of the commission or of the planning and zoning? Of the commission. Okay. It has to pass here first. I see what you're saying. That. Okay. So your motion is to advance this to the uh, January 5th, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the January 8th um, regular session meeting. Yes. Correct. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner um, Johnson. And a, did we get a second there? Yeah, I'll okay. Second, yeah. second and the third. Good luck. Second and third. Second and third. Uh, yeah, but, but didn't Commissioner didn't Commissioner Johnson make the motion? I did. I ain't hear my tab, but I ain't, I ain't, I'm not used to hitting no tab. To get it right. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make Commissioner Johnson the one who made the motion. I'm gonna make Commissioner Stormgate Watts the one who seconded it. This, this reminds me of my kid playing uh, PlayStation at home. 
Well, point of information, Mr. Clark, do we meet the second, that Tuesday after the first? Uh, you do, yeah, the okay. second and fifth. I'm sorry, I okay. misstated this that date. It is January 5th for that okay. regular okay. session. Right. Yeah. Just for the regular sure. session, not uh, another work session. Okay, um, Commissioner Johnson, did you want to comment on this? Uh, I will if other people got questions. If not, then. Uh, well, <clears> well <throat> I, I would like to make, I don't even know what a 143 is. So, uh, 143 basically is set up just like the other districts, the residential districts. There, you got a R112, R17, I think an R15, and that's basically based upon the square footage of the lot. So this is a 40, uh, 43,560 square foot lot, um, and it will follow the same precedence as a um, half acre, quarter acre, or a lot, um, with the restriction that a um, uh, manufactured home will be by special use only. Your RA will still be in effect, and uh, as you, some of you got the email, RAs are actually supposed to have some component of agriculture to it, and if not, that's a citation based upon curtain law. So this basically will allow a person to have a acre lot and have special use by right on manufactured homes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Jackson. Yes, I, I, I don't know if this, does this system support uh, in global? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to make a <laughs> substitute motion to, I don't know how you do it on here, but I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, I'm gonna if you'd you. like, I can say you, you can, um, you, there should be a button to hit for a substitute motion, and then we can. Um, don't. Yeah, I don't see it on here for me, so. But hold on, hold on. No, we can we can get it after this, but I like to make a substitute motion to in global advance resolution number fifty two, resolution number fifty three, uh, the resolution for the theater performing arts, the Carl Staples resolution, Shreveport Little Theater resolution, Cool Sobek resolution, Taurus for Tot special recognition and resolution. Uh, Human Rights Day Special Recognition and Resolution, uh, Cattle Fire District Board Number One uh, appointment, and authorize Stacy Brown as a visitor for December eighth. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner J Jackson and a second by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts. To, could you take us through those one more time, Commissioner Jackson, or uh, Mr. Everything Porter? that's left on the agenda except uh, resolution number 54. Except resolution number 54. So the entire agenda except resolution number 54. I guess, and that, that was a second by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts. Okay. <clears throat> We're, the resolution is proposing that we advance to Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, we can pick up some of these things on Thursday if we have an issue with them. Um, except for the one that I mentioned. Except 54. Mm -hmm. Except uh, 52. Oh. That would be in January. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion? Let's see. We have Hopkins on the board. Yeah, I, I, I object to adding 53 and 54 to that in Globo, mm -hmm. along with the appointment, everything okay. else. Well, I'll take them out then. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll you're you're out. moving 53. The proposal is we have take a, out 53. So I'll I'll amend my motion to take out 53. I never had 54 in, and then I'll take out the appointment. Which the the appointment is what number? To the fire district one board. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. So so we have a proposed amendment. Um, to take out 53, 54, and the, and the appointment. Um, anything else, Commissioner Hopkins? I, I'd just like to say to uh, Mr. Johnson, kudos for being creative. Um, just a nice way to say no more trailers. I'll, nope. give, I'll give you that. Well, no, not necessarily. It, it, it fits what we're trying to move toward. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good compromise. All right. All right, Commission, um, Commissioner Chavez, you're on the board. I, I am. Um, in the essence of time, I don't want to stop this up, but for 52, uh, are you just saying we're advancing it to January and then we vote on it then? Or? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, 
and something else I thought I heard like does, is it going to a committee as well or just get advanced so once once we pass it then it goes to the cattle parish planning commission they will then take it up and vote on it okay so we would have to so it'll be advanced to the January meeting then we would we would debate it and vote on whether we then forward it to the parish planning zone for their uh, consideration okay got it thanks president thank you okay we all set everybody set all right let's vote please all right and that uh, motion passes uh, that is seven in favor and um, three opposed and um, that brings us then to the item that was not included uh, which is let's see I believe 12.4 was the first one that was excluded from the angle logo 12.4 resolution number 53 yes which is a resolution uh, authorizing resolution number 53 of 2022 a resolution of the Caddo Parish Commission state of Louisiana approving and authorizing the Caddo Parish Fire District number one of the Parish of Caddo State of Louisiana to issue sell and deliver revenue refunding certificates in an amount not not exceeding five hundred eighty three thousand uh, dollars in one or more series and providing for other matters in connection therewith move to adopt or move to, to move to Thursday second we have a motion from <coughs> Commissioner Hopkins to advance a second from Commissioner Chavez according to the board uh, Commissioner Hopkins, I think at like this to... time we we'd be the Grant Schluter, would you like to come up and, and say anything on this <clears throat> and just explain what what's going on and what they're doing? Actually, we're not handling that oh, particular okay. matter, well, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thought that's why you were here. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're this this is a, a to <laughs> approve. Cattle Parish Fire District number one to sell and deliver revenue refunding certificates. And I think this is a way to, for them to get uh, to redo their bond money mm -hmm. stuff. What's the difference in a revenue refinance. refinancing certificate? They're going to, I think they're going to do it at a lower rate. For what I think it is. So they're yeah. refinancing. Yeah, they're refinancing it. So okay, they're refinancing. Okay. That's all. All right. Um, Commissioner Johnson? Uh, I won't be supporting this for the simple fact that fire district one is also in cattle parish district two and they had no courtesy of letting me know about this they have nobody here today to talk about what it is in detail so i will not be supporting it. okay there's two commissioners in <coughs> fire district one so if they talk to one and then talk to the other one bad on them all right thank you commissioner johnson Anybody else? Commissioner Gage Watts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just had a question for Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, do you think that we should move this until you talk to them? No. They can put it back on the agenda. Start it all over again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, seeing no one else. Oh, on I should have been. Oh, Commissioner Jackson. Okay. Yes. I think I might need Commissioner Elperson to help me with my gadget over here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> having a problem. Um, I had a t well. I guess now I have um, two, qu or maybe a question and a statement. I'll support the commissioner for that area uh, in hopes that in the future, you know, we recognize that we represent areas, and uh, there is a level of due diligence and courtesy uh, that is due to individuals who are duly. Uh, elected for those areas and so uh, I don't I, that's my philosophy that's my belief anybody who's worked with me up here know that's kind of how I am um, and so I didn't know that this was a split thing and so I don't I don't have a problem uh, postponing uh, I do want to ask uh, but I guess if nobody's here to answer the question I was going to ask how has interest rates affected their the increase in interest rates affected their ability to one to finance and refinance but I guess we got to wait to get some clarity on that because I, I do think that that should be asked and are they refinancing because of higher interest rates so I just think that that needs to be 
that does need to be asked? And are we responsible for their debt services? Or does that we're come back to us? Yeah. Are we're we not responsible for no, payments? No. No. We're not, well, I guess like if they default on payments. Yes. Then yes. Do, do we, that's what I was asking. Okay. So we do have some level of obligation here for due diligence. So thank you, Ms. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Um, Haley, did, did these guys, did anyone reach out to the parish at all on this? Um, Jeff and I both received an email to get this on the agenda, and I was, I was looking to see um, who that actually came from, but a direct conversation with them, I, I did not have one. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, are we ready to vote? Seeing no one on the board, let's vote, please, to, on whether to advance this to Thursday or not. There was no substitute motion, was it? No. Okay, uh, that motion fails uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, I believe it's seven no votes, or three in support, seven in opposition, and two absent. And that, I think, brings us to, back to the... Um, Let me just say that, uh, Mr. Clark, forgive me for interrupting you, but, you know, perhaps the fire district should come, come down and brief us and, and get everybody on the same page out of respect for, for asking for us to vote on it. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Absolutely, no problem. And, and with apologies, I was um, actually a little distracted myself trying to find the original email um, that came... Uh, to us, um, and I want to say that it came from their attorney. So, I, uh, uh, like Haley, I have not spoken to Fire District One, but we received this email just requesting it be added to the agenda. So, uh, I will try to pull that original email and share it with y'all. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, that brings us back to uh, the end of our new business. Uh, and so now we're at communiques and committee Wait, report. Mr. Clerk, aren't we on resolution 54? 54. 54. Wait, I think we did. No, 54. No, no, no. no. We have it. I left it out of the book. Oh, I, yeah, I'm so sorry. I skipped. No, no, that was 54. Resolution 54. 12.4 and 12.5 were both omitted from the Encloba. So we're at 12.5. I'm sorry about that. Yes. That brings us to authorizing resolution number 54 of 2022. It's a very important one, actually. Uh, a resolution providing for canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the special election held in Caterpillar, Louisiana on Tuesday, November 8th. To authorize the renewal of special taxes therein and the issuance of general obligation bonds. Right, we have a motion from Commissioner Jackson to, to um, accept, to authorize the resolution, and a second by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts. Any comments, Commissioner Jackson? A absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Dr. Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, I see uh, Mr. Grant here. Yes, sir. Uh, what I do not see is any local bond council. This is early in the I, just, that? just saying, I know that all we're doing is canvassing here. We have a team. Sir. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to make sure that we are very clear on the front end mm -hmm. that, you know, we would like to see the local minority bond council uh, we just had a conversation here today about the representation and reflection of this parish mm -hmm. and uh, would definitely like to see that reflected yes, um, um, I do believe that uh, and I'm just gonna open the conversation up I do believe that we have people here locally um, that can lead our bond team the report just came out about losing population and that's caused our ratings to downgrade. Um, people leave Shreveport and Cattle Parish because they don't have opportunities. And if we have young professionals or just professionals in general here who can get this work done, I think we ought to be kicking and fighting, screaming, scratching and crawling, trying to figure out how to get them on board because those are resources and dollars that stay in this local community. And so that conversation that we had here earlier about the S&P report and the conversation we had in the back about this trend, and if my understanding was 
And what I read from the S&P report was <coughs> the trend is we have nothing to respond for people who want to stay here and work here. And these professional services from the city, the parish, the school board, from all these different layers of uh, government, they are important for us. Um, I don't know, I haven't researched it, but I don't know that uh, Orleans or Jefferson or Livingston parishes, I don't know that they have a population decline. What I do know is that Cattle Parish is leading the state in population loss. And we have to do any and everything to fix that. And that also includes giving professionals an opportunity to be in the first chair and not the third chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Um, Ms. Bryant, can you can you explain what this resolution what this resolution is is, is proposing just to make sure we all understand it, including myself? Yes, sir. It's just um, acknowledging what the results of the election are. You all have to actually canvass those results. So we're acknowledging the results of the election, and then but we're also. Uh, authorizing renewal of special taxes and the issuance of general, general obligation bonds. So we're basically saying, okay, the, the, the vote came in support of the bonds. Now we can actually go issue the bonds. And we'll, we'll have a separate resolution a at some one. point issue. on the bonds. To issue the bonds. To issue the bonds. We have it. That's not before you right now. To authorize the renewal of special taxes therein and the issuance of general obligation bonds. Yes. That, so I'll let Grant um, update. Yeah. The language, you know, as is often the case, the language is a little distorted. Sure, I understand. Just to clarify, the resolution does nothing at this point further than canvas the returns and declare the results of the election. The bond issuance process is separate. Uh, this is uh, a requirement under state law for every public body after you hold a bond tax election to canvas the returns, promulgate the results of the election, and it goes no further than that. Okay, thank you. All right, seeing no one else on the board, are we ready to vote? Yes. Uh, let's vote, please. I keep reaching for my old. <coughs> Okay, and that motion carries uh, with 10 in support, none in opposition, and two absent. Okay. And that then brings us to the end of new business. Now we have the appointment. We still oh, have I'm the sorry, appointment. I'm sorry, the appointment was skipped? Yeah. I thought that was included in the enjoyment. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 12.13, uh, 12, uh, 12, uh, uh, which is authorizing the appointment to the Caddo Fire District Number One Board, appointing Mr. Tony Moffat to the Fire District Number One Board to fill the unexpired term of Mr. Carlos Gibson. Move to Thursday. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Hopkins to move to Thursday. A sec. Well, actually, the board says that Lyndon Johnson gave the uh, yeah, motion. That that I'll give Hopkins the motion and Lyndon it's the really second. Included, yeah. Any comments? Now, th this is an appointment that actually comes from. My part, my district, I guess, Mr. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> my half of the district. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's not, not not your district. Yours comes up tomorrow, uh, Thursday, I think. Uh, one for a reappointment. But that's what this is. This replaces Mr. Carlos Gibson, who has resigned from the board, and Mr. Tony Moffat has asked to be appointed. That's all. And you approve of the appointment? I approve it. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone on the board? All right. Let's see. No one. Let's vote. All right, and the motion carries with 10 in support, none in opposition, and two absent. All right, does that take us to the end of the agenda? That does now that take us to count. communiques and committee reports. Uh, any communiques or committee reports? If so, get on the board, Chavez. Just a, a question on this new system, Jeff. When we, when we press the button to log in, or, or that we're present as opposed to say it, does this camera, video us that we're doing it like how, how do we show the video footage with the minutes to reflect it no we have an override uh, do you mean like if somebody were to 
put a present button, but well, not like be there. Like Commissioner Everson checked me in because I was out of town or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we have an override that we manually can prevent any, you know, any buttons that are being pushed by someone else. <laughs> so, you know, we, we can monitor that. And that is why we also ask that these tablets stay in the chamber. These aren't for you to, um, to take with you when you leave today. They, they stay where they are. <laughs> That's all. Thanks, President. Okay. Uh, seeing no one else on the board, can we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Not on, not on the <coughs> all right. We are. Are we adjourned, Commissioner Johnson? You, you okay? I think you tried. I, 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 I see it on the panel. Right. We're adjourned. Uh,